So I forgot the uh, phone this morning when I went to the woods, but we made our second collection today. Uh, the sap's not been running great. It's been pretty cool, but we have had uh, enough fluctuation in temperature to give us uh, a couple of sap runs. So, so far this year, we've had uh, about, uh, not quite a gallon and a half per tree, uh, but we're getting ready to get into a big cold spell. So that should change quite a bit when we come out of that. So anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and run this through the reverse osmosis. Now here, I just pulled the sap sock out of the, uh, out of the collection tank here. And whenever we pump the syrup out of the containers or out of the uh, tanks in the woods onto this tank right here, uh, it all flows through this, I think it's a 50 micron sap sock. So that catches all the larger impurities that might be in there. Uh, in the beginning of the season, it's usually a little bit worse than other times. I don't know if we can get a look in there, but uh, a little bit of yuckies, but not too bad. And then from here on out, it's usually very clean, but there's always a little bit of residue left in the lines that uh, it's just nearly impossible to get out. So we'll throw that in the washing machine. No soap, of course, just a hot rinse, and that'll clean up the sap sock real nice, and that'll be ready to go for the next flow. So one of the things that we like to do whenever we uh, collect the sap, at least every other time we collect the sap, is to walk the main line and make sure there are no leaks, either at the connections, at the saddles here, or uh, on the lateral lines that are running back up into the woods. And the way you can figure out if there's a leak or not is if a line has a leak, it'll have evenly spaced air bubbles in it. Well, folks, I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the things that I'm looking for whenever you walk the main line is regular air bubbles, and we have it here. So you can see we have evenly spaced air bubbles, and that means there is an air injection point at some point. Now that could be a squirrel chew, that could be a bad fitting, it could even be a hollow tree, uh, or a tree that's uh, bleeding a little bit of air into it because it drilled into some, uh, some doughy or a hollow core of a tree. So anyway, we'll walk up this line and see if we can't find the source of the air injection. Well, I've looked all the way to the end and I cannot find where there is any damage to these lines. So uh, the only thing I can really come to the conclusion of is that it must be a hollow tree. And I do remember there were some when we were tapping this that uh, seemed a little bit doughy uh, where I hit softer wood. So we'll figure that that's probably the case, but uh, we'll come up here and check it later on during a heavier flow and see if we can't find the leak. So here we are with the first draw of 2024. We have some crazy light syrup this year. I think this is some of the lightest syrup we've ever had. Hopefully many more gallons to come. Well, it's another late evening here. Uh, we're getting ready for the big deep freeze. I checked the uh, sap today and it actually had flowed a little bit more than I expected. So I ended up uh, collecting up about 200 gallons of sap. And so we've been making the mad dash around the farm today to get everything ready for the uh, near zero temperatures. We don't get those too often here in Missouri. Here we can see Sugar Shack. We've been running this evening trying to get the last bit of sap cooked off we want to get everything uh, like i said all prepped for this cold spell and uh, what i like to do is to get this uh, the evaporator cooked as low as we can and you can see i've already uh, put the drain pipe into the back pan just to drain out everything make sure no pipes bust and uh, we'll let this cool down here because I have been cooking all night already. We'll let this cool down. And uh, we'll probably in the morning, it'll still have a little bit of heat left to it. And then we'll put that in a barrel. What's left, we'll completely drain this evaporator. So nothing breaks on it. 
And that's pretty much the scoop of how we get ready for the cold. Uh, the, the sap pump is put away. It's in the heated shed. Uh, the reverse osmosis, everything is all, it's all put up ready for the cold. Well, hey folks, we're in the, the middle of the big deep freeze here in uh, Southeast Missouri. We've had a past couple of days in the single digits, highs and lows, and we don't you get that uh, kind of weather too often here in Missouri. But we're at uh, my home place here, and we've got about 100 taps to set today and a few other little things to do. Uh, we brought the tank over. Uh, that'll be the sap collection tank. And uh, once we get that in place, and we have one more line to run here. Uh, we, that last line that we want to run today is kind of special to me. Uh, that was the one run of maple tubing that my mom was able to help me with. Uh, before uh, before she got to the point where she couldn't get out too much anymore So that would that is one stretch of maple run. I actually have not switched over to the 3 16th line But it is 5 16th line and it's still nice and clean and still in good condition So we're still using that kind of in memory of mom. So we're gonna get busy here unloading the truck and moving the tote down to the collection point and then running that last line used to be straight up and down hmm. but I think we can still get it to work I'll pull that tote underneath it so for the uh, little bit of 5 16th line that we have remaining we have these stainless steel reusable bits and they work pretty good um, See if I can do this while holding the camera. One of the risks here is driving these in a little bit too far. You just kind of get a feel for it and you know when to stop. But, oops, sorry there. There we have that one hooked up. So here we are in the sugar kitchen and we're uh, filtering right now our first batch of syrup for the year. We've had it on the finishing pan and got it to the exact density it needs to be. Even was able to test out our new refractometer that we got here and that's working pretty good. I think I realized that a lot of our syrup in the past was probably a little bit more dense than it should have been. But right now the, uh, the syrup is filtering really nice. It's not clogging the filter at all with the maple sand. Filling up the canning unit. Alright, here we're bottling some of our first syrup of the year. And I've got the, since I'm using small glass here, uh, that small glass I have to heat up so I keep that warm. And just a, uh, what do you call these things? Crock pot. Crock pot. So I got that on high and a little bit of water in there. It keeps the glass warm. Doing these little bottles are rather tedious. But when you do the decorative jars especially, you want to fill them to the very top because that syrup will shrink quite a bit. We're out in the woods today, uh, putting up some maple lines, doing a little bit of work, uh, giving a little instruction with Blake from Prodigy Leadership Academy. Uh, he's out here to learn the ropes and uh, figure out how to, he can take this back to the kids at his school. So finally actually did get some snow as y'all can see. It's still fairly cold. Really though, sun's out today, nice comfortable day to work in the woods. Uh, not not a whole lot more to say so this is where i get lost and, and why it can do the editing yeah. so here we are a day later finishing up tapping the trees on my home place i'm up here on my sketchy little ladder tapping trees that most sane maple producers 
would not tap. But that brings another question. Are there any sane maple producers? Because you gotta be of a different breed to do this. A little bit crazy. And if you're wondering why I'm up here on a ladder, it's because sap likes to flow downhill, not uphill. And the woods here are fairly flat and I just wanted to get a few more trees on this line. So off to the next tree, a few more to go. Hopefully we can get these in before it gets completely dark. I might need a taller ladder. Uh, no, I quit before I need a taller ladder. Okay, let's see if I can drill less than Sorry for not zooming in on the tap, but my hand, other hand is really cold and it's inside a nice warm-ish glove. All right, good enough. All right, my hand's getting cold. So here we have one more little clip of me up on my ladder that is most definitely OSHA approved. Yeah. And we're going to try to get this tap in. I think this is the highest one of the night. I don't think I can hold this while I drill or else I might have a Griswold moment. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so maybe now I can film myself standing on a ladder, tapping a tree. Where's the, oh, there's another tap wound. Um, oh, there's another tap wound. Um, that up there is far enough from another tap wound. Um, what's wrong with my drill? Ooh, that's reverse. Nothing like sawdust in the eyes and in the beard. All right, here we go. I think I can get that in there. Oh, it's fighting me a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I think I got it. All right, may have a couple more high ones to do, but that one is definitely the highest one. And let's see. Hammer holder. Drill. And we shall descend the ladder. And get the sawdust out of my mouth and beard. Okay, there we go. All right, a couple more taps to go, and then we can head home. And here it's a few days later and we're out in that new sugar bush that we've been working on. Jed is tightening up a main line and getting it nice and snug. And when he gets that a little bit tighter, we'll walk through and level all the uh, contact points on the trees. And that should be about good for now. So we'll walk through and level that up. So we had to take uh, take it off the ratchet or the ratcheting tightener because I forgot to put on all our little plastic holders, and these work to uh, attach the line to the trees and still provide some protection for if a limb falls on it. And I can explain that when I'm actually putting these on the trees. Not the first time I've had to take it off the ratcheting tightener to do this. So here we're gonna attempt to uh, unwind the main line using the homemade contraption that we got. Uh, I have no idea if this is gonna work or not, but we're going to give it a try. This main line, this is a thousand foot roll, so they're pretty heavy. 
and it would be nice if I had the true unspooler, but hey, those cost a lot of money. We'll see how this goes. foot spool of this again that's just way too much weight to work with i'm going to stick to the 500 foot spools and you can see there at the end i knew i could untwist it because he was getting close but you can see why you have to have an unspooler because if you just go over out the top of the spool uh, it creates all those uh curly cues so anyway, we're going to figure out how much we need and cut it off and take those out and then start hanging it up. Okay, we're back to the new sugar bush. And he is running the line. And we have the, what do you call it, line unspooler sitting in that little hole, which is also over here. So I'm actually sitting up here on a roll, bunch of rolls of tubing. And all I gotta do is make sure it didn't turn too fast. If you're wondering why you stop so much on and off, it's because it takes a lot of thinking to plan your route. Because this line is going to be up for the next five years and we want it to be as efficient as, compo uh, as possible. This job isn't too hard. Okay, so it turns out it didn't work as good as we thought. You can see where it um, kind of rubbed it. He had to shoot it off. So, then that's a little better. But that'll work for it. Until it hits that. That works a little bit better. So, see you after this gets run. So, just... I've already walked the, or planned out this maple line. When I walk down the hill, so I should be able just to just walk up the hill pulling the line. Oh, had a stoppage there. At first, those spools, sometimes the line tries to pull through a little bit. All right, next maple tree, there it is. So here we are out in the woods, uh, finishing up, getting the last few taps in that had already been, already been prepped. Um, Many years I spent a lot of late nights in the woods getting the maple all finished up. And uh, it's actually kind of pleasant being out here in the dark. Oh, there's my hammer. I'm holding it in the camera hand. Uh, these woods are really easy to tap in the dark simply because uh, these are the first time these trees have been tapped, so I don't have to look for the previous tap winds. So all I gotta do is walk up to the tree, drill, put in that tap, seat it, and move on to the next tree. So really a pretty simple process. And once again, it's just so enjoyable being out here in the woods at night. It's very peaceful in an odd sort of way. I very much enjoy it. And uh, you may have seen the clip earlier about what I bring to the woods with me. One of the things is a handgun. Sounds kind of crazy, but uh, three times in the past, I have actually had coyotes probably within 20 to 30 yards stalking me while I've been working on maple, as crazy as that is. But uh, anyway, I don't want to take any chances. There we go. Ah, 
I love being out here now. Well, anyway, just another uh, day or night in the life of a maple producer. We'll see you next time. That wraps up the preparations for uh, the maple season. We now have about 1,000 taps out. Uh, we started with about 500 taps on that first run, but now we have about 1,000 taps out and uh, looking forward to the warm up here coming out of this deep freeze. Hopefully we get a lot of good sap so we can make a lot of high quality syrup. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe.